Well, Rupert, you called for Cressida Dick's resignation back on this show in October. You must feel vindicated now. Well, I mean, look, it's a sad end to a 40-year career of public service, isn't it? But it just felt that by the end, she was someone known for apologising all the time. And since I think the list of things that time I was on in October, there have been more. Uh, the disgusting tales of what came out of Charing Cross Police Station and the Stephen Port murders, that's four people, at least three of whom would have been alive today had there not been this bungling incompetence and this idea that gay lives don't matter. And, you know, racism, sexism, homophobia, that's a lot of Londoners that implicates if we're talking about BME communities, women um, and uh, LGBT communities. So, look, maybe this was kind of one scandal too many. She she turned out to be someone, you know, there was great promise at the beginning, the first woman in post, the first LGBT person. Um, but um, I think fresh leadership is needed, really. It would send a strong signal. And obviously the Met Police has got a lot of problems. Someone's head on a plate isn't going to magically make all those go away. So things like training, recruitment and retention, uh, standards when you're in post because some of these things whatsapp i mean the whatsapp messages yeah. maybe there are rules in place for those kind of things that have happened since the rule book was written Rupert badly handled by sadiq khan he has after all not consulted the home secretary and now the met is left rudderless well again we need sort of clearer lines of communication because it's an unusual position in london we don't have a pcc police and crime commissioner so we've got this strange relationship between the home secretary and the mayor but ultimately in this country we have policing by consent and also all the polling shows that trust and confidence in the Met Police, even to handle the Downing Street investigations, I think the latest YouGov stuff on will this be genuinely independent, um, it, it seems to have gone amongst Londoners. So, and, and it just seemed that interview, people used to say a week is a long time in politics. Gosh, things change by the half hour nowadays, don't they? So the interview of the Thursday morning compared to the position on Thursday night, she did seem a bit tin-eared. Again, after the Stephen Port murder, she was denying that there's um, uh, homophobia in the ranks. Um, I just think, I don't know, we are where we are. It's done now. And Bob makes a good point that we need to make sure that the right person comes forward now. Because I understand that the reappointment in the autumn was partly because there was no obvious successor. So we need to be kept. So I don't know if that was a case of, you know, for fear of worse, cling to nurse. But we need to make sure that there is someone that has not just because she was apparently the copper's copper, okay. but not just the trust of the rank and file police officers, but of Londoners as well. Bob Rupert, the GLA has served a termination notice now on the developer, but it's been nine years. Shouldn't there be a stronger oversight of these big infrastructure projects? I mean, look, this is the wrong side of London for me. I don't have detailed knowledge of it. You're right that City Hall has moved there already. So that was meant to kickstart this area. It was meant to be an alternative financial centre to the city. But to me, it looks like just another of these Boris Johnson vanity projects where, you know, he's been sold some magic beans and the beanstalk never quite materialised. How many of these have we got? The cable car, the, which, you know, hardly anyone uses. The figures are really grim on that. The water cannon, the garden bridge, that was tons and tons of public money that never materialised at all. And just the, the parallel I can see in West London, Bob mentioned it actually, is the OPDC, Old Oak and Park Royal Development Corporation. That was meant to be a super development opportunity area, kind of on the scrubland where Wormwood Scrubs is. Um, that was meant to be 25 um, and a half thousand new homes. 65,000 jobs, again, signed off by Boris Johnson in his term as mayor. None of those have materialised okay. yet. We are getting a new HS2 station, but again, we don't even have a Rip guarantee up. of funding that the station will run because we've got an anti-London government. So, you know, he signed these off when he was Rip London up. mayor, but now He's not giving the money to make them happen. We must leave it there. I'm sure we'll have plenty more on this, though, another time. Thank I mean, you. Rupert, many people will probably be surprised that the police can and do use these powers, fining homeless people a £1,000. It's nonsensical, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's a punitive anachronism. And, you know, we, we don't need it. It's 200 years old, nearly. Um, I mean, we saw some good things happen in this pandemic. There was the Everyone In initiative. Uh, by government to take people um, into hotels that were not being used for those purposes. I think 450 rough sleepers in Ealing were housed at the time. But that looks to have been a sort of temporary thing. And, uh, you know, what we need is sustained. Again, like with London Transport, we keep going hand to mouth with these settlements. We need a proper, sustained, long-term solution to these things. 
but yeah, getting rid of the Vagrancy Act would be part of it. And actually, one of my predecessors, um, he was Sir George Young, now Lord George Young, he did an article in the Times with Robert Jenry, arguing that the fact that people can be criminalised means that they're scared to seek help. Um, there's things like the Street Link initiative, um, where they can sort of put people in up for the night. But again, people are sort of terrified they'll have this £1,000 fine or whatever. So it just seems nonsensical. We still and I hope the government listens to sense. Thank you. Rupa, what's your view? Uh, well, it is the oldest profession in the world, is it not? Um, I think maybe more research is needed to look into this. Um, I know that the Home Affairs Select Committee under Keith Vaz, remember him? In 2016, I think they recommended going down this decriminalisation route and giving women employment rights. Um, and I'm all for trade unions, but... Um, yeah, I just don't know enough about it. I think, um, yeah, you don't want to drive something illegal even more underground. I think if you went the other way, what they do in Nordic countries, um, you know, it makes unsafe women even less safe. OK. I wouldn't want to go down that route, but I, I guess more research is needed. Thank you.